Okay, here's another demo on our premium three-port car socket splitter, and this is the upgraded model, the RS20S, which has a lot more new features than the older model, the RS20. And today we're checking out these very interesting, yet very practical new features that can never be seen on other similar products on the market. Okay, now uh, if we look at this one here without the packaging, it looks almost exactly the same as the older model with three units. The power plug, which is very small, so it won't stick out too much after it's plugged into the car's outlet. And the control unit, where there are four touch sensor power switches, a display, and a master power switch at the side. And the main body with three extended outlets and two USB ports on it. Okay, now let's look at this one that's been already mounted on our car. Here we made the control and the main body very close to each other for easy demonstration. Okay, now it's powered off because our car is off. Let's turn the car on. Now, as you can see, the sensor switches on the control light up sequentially, while the corresponding outlets and the USB ports on the main body switch on sequentially as well. Now, as you can understand, if all the outlets switch on simultaneously instead of sequentially, it could be a lot of stress on our car's battery because there would be a current surge the moment they're switched on, especially when they're fully loaded. And this sequential kind of setup can significantly reduce the amount of stress on the battery. Okay, now we can turn off each of the outlets by simply touching its corresponding switch. So number one off, two off, three off, and USB off. And back on, and one and two off. Now, if we want to quickly shut off the entire device, just press down the master switch and hold it for about two seconds, then everything's off. And we can switch it back on by pressing it briefly without holding. So on again, with three and USB still on and one and two still off. Okay, now if we think uh, the backlighting for the switches is too bright or too dim for us, we can actually adjust to the brightness. Uh, and what we're gonna do is still press and hold to the master switch and then quickly touch the USB key. Here it is. Uh, and we have to do it quickly, otherwise it's gonna shut off as we already know. Uh, now we can increase and decrease the brightness by using key number three and number two, which are flashing. And we can choose between nine levels of brightness. Now it's level four. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. And go down. Eight, seven, six, five. Okay, uh, after having selected the level we want, uh, we can save it by doing the same. So press and hold and then quickly touch. Now, if we look at the display, what we have now uh, is the battery voltage. Uh, but of course, we have more than that. Press briefly the master switch, and now we have the USB output amp. But of course, our USB ports are not charging any devices yet, uh, so it reads zero amp. Now again, now it's the timer mode. And again, back to the voltage. So three modes now. Now, one of the most important features we have is the temperature display. But in order to have that, we first need to toggle on the temp display function. And here's how we do it. So first, press and hold to shut it off. And then when it's off, press and hold again to enter the function selection menu. Now it's function one, which is the startup delay timer, which we'll be looking at in a moment. Now touch it. Now function two, that is the automatic power off timer. And again, now as you can see, it skipped function three because function three is related to function two, which means we won't see function three on the menu unless we have function two toggled on first. Okay, now it's function four, which is the temperature display. So again, press and hold to go to the next step. Now we have three options. Um, off means the function is disabled and we have centigrade and Fahrenheit which is what we want okay so again press and hold 
until we see the word set. Now release the button to complete the setting. Okay, now if we look at the display again, uh, we have the voltage now, the USB output, and timer, and this is the temperature. But of course we need to uh, connect this external thermometer cable to the corresponding USB port. And we have the temperature reading right away. Also, uh, we're going to plug a phone into the other port. And the charging current is displayed right away. So now we have the timer, temperature, voltage, and the USB output. And it's 1.86 amps, which is charging pretty fast. Next, we're going to look at another very interesting and very useful feature, the startup delay timer, which is function one. But first, uh, let's look at what will happen with a feature disabled. Now our car's electricity is on, and let's turn it off first. And the device shuts off too. And turn it on again. And the device which is on right away too. And if, if we look at the battery voltage, it's now 12.4 volts. And let's start up the engine now. Now, as you have noticed, uh, the power to the device is temporarily cut off during the engine startup and then comes on again after the engine started running. And the voltage rises to 14.3 volts now. Okay, now let's set up the startup delay timer and see what the difference will be. Uh, okay, first let's shut off the engine and then turn on the car again with the engine off. Okay, now uh, we follow the same steps for the setting. So first, press and hold to shut it off. And then press and hold again to select the function. And function one is exactly what we want. So press and hold again to select the time. And now if we touch either of the flashing keys, we see a number that represents the time in second. So now one second, two, three, four, five, six, and go down, five, four, three, two, one, and then off. And if we touch it again, uh, it goes directly to 30 seconds, which is the maximum. And now let's go for five seconds. So off, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now press and hold again until the word set shows up. Now look at what will happen after I release the button. Five, four, three, two, one, on. Okay, let's do it again. And this time, let's turn off the car first. And then turn it on again. So nothing happens. Then start the engine. One two, three, four, five, on. So what happens is each time it's connected to the power supply, it won't switch on right away anymore. Instead, it'll wait for five seconds before it really does. That way, it's perfectly dodged this on, off, on again process during the engine startup and the volatility of the vo battery voltage, which is very likely to cause your attached gadgets to work erratically, to freeze up or something like that. Okay, the next two features we're going to check out are really designed for those cars that come with an always-on type of cigarette lighter socket, or the power outlet. By always-on, it means the power to the outlet on those cars won't be cut off even after the engine is stopped and the keys pulled out. Now the great thing about this kind of electrical design is that you can use your dash camera if you have one for the parking surveillance purpose because uh, the outlet can continuously supply power to the camera uh, even when the car is parked. Uh, but the downside is there would be a risk of draining your battery if you leave your camera on for a long time. 
And with the two features we're uh, looking at, our device can uh, perfectly serve as the so-called BDP device, battery discharge prevention, to ensure the safe use of your camera in the parking mode. Okay, now let's check them out. And the first we're looking at is the automatic power off timer, which is function two. Okay, now let's set it up. And first, still, press and hold the master switch to shut it off. And then press and hold again to select the function. And function two is what we want, so touch it. And press and hold again to set the timer. And now by touching either key number three or number two, we have the number that indicates the time. So it looks exactly the same as in function one, the startup delay timer, but the difference is the number here is the minute instead of the second. So now one minute, two, three, five, eight, ten minutes, and go down, eight, five, three, two, one, and then off. And then if we touch it again, we have 120 minutes, which means we can set it to up to two hours. Okay, let's just to go for one minute. Okay, then press and hold again until set shows up and then release to complete. Okay, now what's gonna happen is the device will automatically switch off after one minute of the battery voltage dropping below a certain value, which is the threshold voltage value. Uh, in our case, it's 13 volts, which is the default setting. And if we look at the battery voltage, voltage now, it's 12.4 volts, which is definitely below 13 volts, which means the automatic power off, the APO process is going on right now. So why don't we just give it a couple of more seconds to see what's gonna happen. Okay, now the text of APO starts flashing, which is telling you that uh, it's gonna shut off pretty soon. So everything's off. Now, if the default setting of 13 volts is not what we want, of course we can set our own values. That's function three. So let's set it up. Now uh, it's off, so let's just press and hold to select the function. Two and three. Now, as you can see, uh, as long as function two has been activated, we're able to see function three on the menu. So press and hold. So the default setting is 13 volts and go up and we can go up to 14 volts and go down and we can go all the way down to 11 volts well, let's just go for uh, 12 volts so 0 0.6 5 4 3 2 1 and exactly 12 volts okay now press and hold again until set and then release to complete Okay, now the device is not gonna shut off anymore because the voltage we have right now, 12.4, is above 12 volts, which, is, which we have just to set. Uh, and if we have a camera attached to one of the outlets, it's gonna keep working until after one minute of the battery voltage dropping below 12 volts as a way to protect the battery from excessive discharge. 